policy advocacy? What do you do when you advocate? And why is this important? Well, maraming mga employers or business uh, organizations uh, include in their mission statements and action plans some references to advocacy or lobby on behalf of their members. While advocacy and lo lobbying is an activity that is prone to the so-called uh, free rider tendency because it benefits. Well, unang una yung training na binibigay niyo sa amin. Na-experience na ko nung mga nasa Batangas province pa ako. Yung pagbibigay niyo like sa tourism, yung mga housekeeping, yung mga pagbibigay niyo sa amin ng idea. And napakalaking tulong ng ECOP sa amin. Hindi lang sa company ko, kundi dun pa sa iba. Mga ka -Ecop, welcome again to Echo Plus Amplifying Your Voice 2.0 Airing every other Monday at 5.30pm We hope that through this program, makatulong kami sa inyo sa iba't ibang concerns aming mga fellow employers. Our program today is the second part of our episode called Importance of Policy Advocacies to MSMEs. Through this episode, gusto namin mas ipakilala sa mga MSMEs ang konsepto ng policy advocacy, pati na rin ang role nito sa pag-ensure ng isang masaganang business environment. Sa programa natin today, itutuloy nating tuklasin kung paano nakikita ang policy advocacy sa paggawa ng batas at programa ng gobyerno. Atin rin bibigyan ng guidance ang isang small hardware owner ukol sa kanyang mga katanungan. Last time, we were joined by Mr. Jose Roland A. Moya, Director General of the Employers' Confederation of the Philippines at isang policy advocacy veteran. Ang makakasama natin ngayon ay si Ms. Maria Queselda C., Executive Director ng National Wages and Productivity Commission, isang ahensya ng DOLE na nagbibigay ng oportunidad upang makapag-input ang mga employers sa kanilang mga programa at batas. Para mas makilala natin ang ating bisita, may we now turn over the floor to our correspondent, Ms. Maria Flordelisa Leong, isa ring advocacy expert at Vice President for Advocacy and Communication ng Philippine Exporters Confederation or PhilExport. Thank you very much, Rob and Gianna. And as you mentioned, the spotlight is now on the National Wages and Productivity Commission. And with us here in this episode is no less than the Executive Director. Please welcome Miss Maria Criselda R. C. E.D. Chris, kumusta ka? It's been a long time. Yeah, uh, thank you so much, Lisa, for inviting me here yeah. at Echo Plus, amplifying your voice. I'm happy to be here. Yes, we are happy to have you. And of course, we will be talking about the commission. No? Um, although we parang buzzword yung productivity and wages, but may, maybe many people don't know what the commission does, especially the mandate. Can you please uh, explain that to us? Yeah, uh, th thanks for the question. Uh, the National Wages and Productivity Commission, together with its 16 regional tripartite wages and productivity boards nationwide, uh, we were created under RA 6727 or the Wage Rationalization Act. And we are an attached agency of the Department of Labor and Employment. Uh, we have actually two main mandates. The first one is to set the minimum wage uh, and on regional, uh, province, and industry levels. And uh, the objective of the minimum wage is to protect the vulnerable workers from undue low pay. Now, our second mandate is also connected to our first mandate, but this time, 
the mandate is more on the advocacy for strengthening the link between wages and productivity. So we do a lot of advocacy activities, uh, particularly for the micro, small, and medium enterprises on how they can improve their productivity performance and then ultimately they would be able to hopefully share the, the fruits of productivity also to their workers so that that's a way to increase their income. Okay, um, I don't know there's an industry wage minimum wage you know, I don't know that there's an industry minimum wage uh, it's it's really up to the regional boards to identify oh, okay. uh, whether it's only within the region or they want to do provincial category uh, uh, it's it's really based on their decision and analysis of the socio-economic situation in the region if that warrants to to have industry-based wage but for now really the main trust of the Commission is towards uh, wage simplification because in the past we have I think more than 600 minimum wage rates Wow and it's so difficult and you're to, monitoring yeah and this. so difficult to monitor as you said uh, all those so the thrust since then was to simplify the wage structure so at this time probably we only have uh, around 40 minimum uh, wages across the countries in different regions. but is that possible simplifying? Because you know different different development um, status mm -hmm. of the regions yeah, and the yeah. provinces. So, how do you plan to do that? Uh, that? That's part of the review of the socio-economic conditions. If there are, for example, areas within the region that are already more or less similar in terms of their uh, economic so conditions. So, na then. So for an. For example, in the next round of uh, wage issuance, there would be decisions from the board, or oh, let's collapse the rate of all these regions into one rate. Mm -hmm. So, ganon uh, yung uh, system. Okay. So, over the years, more than a decade, we were able to collapse the rates. And as I said earlier, now it's more than 40, 40 rates nationwide. Okay, but there are how many regions do we have? We have 16 ah, but regions. but there are provinces pa, no? And oh. iba-iba pa rin yun sa provinces. Some regions would actually have that, but there are also regions na, ano na, konti na lang yung wage rates nila, like in NCR, it's only two. In uh, Caraga, it's only one rate in Caraga. And also in some other regions, uh, konti na lang. Ang medyo marami na lang tayong rates ay nasa, I suppose, Region 4A and uh, Region 7. Okay. So, um, you, gave, you, you give the base rates. Is that what is meant by setting the rates? We set the minimum wage. The it minimum. is regulatory in okay. nature, the, okay. uh, the minimum wage. So it's a, a vested rights of workers. Once the, the wage boards issues a wage order, the rates there becomes, you know, the vested right of any worker. So, ibig sabihin, and when I say it's uh, basically set for the most vulnerable workers that we have, it's really for the unskilled workers. So, mm -hmm. Uh, pag pumasok sila ng trabaho, automatic, they are entitled to receive that rate. Okay. Now we go to productivity, yes. no? Kasi oh. parang uh, this is the more, uh, this is the, I, I think, the more positive yes. angle in yes, all correct. these talks, mm -hmm. no? Productivity. So how how is the program of NWPC? What kinds of advocacies are you doing so that ma, 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 ma shift to this angle yung discussions and yung focus yeah uh, thanks for the question and in fact this is an opportunity for us again to do an advocacy on why it's important especially for the micro small and medium enterprises to go into productivity initiatives so we have uh, several training programs uh, it is actually contained in one productivity toolbox that's how we call the program and we have the basic training uh, the basic training essentially uh, contains uh, modules that, uh, of course, that are all basics mm -hmm. when it comes to, for example, what is the basic concept of productivity, why is it important to have a good work ethics in the organization, uh, what is the relation of that to productivity improvement, why is it important to have a good working condition, so, meron kami doon ang mga modules namin mga about basic housekeeping. Mm -hmm. we, we teach micro-entrepreneurs how, yes, how to do those things. And then, uh, the basic 
tools and technologies that would allow them to problem solve uh, in the company. Now, the second uh, steps in the training program is the the intermediate program that we have. At ito naman talaga yung mga productivity tools and technologies, mga management tools that we use to improve na the productivity. So, we ask the establishments. It's actually a customized ano na, training for establishments. We normally ask them, uh, what is do yes. you think is your main productivity problem? Then we would start from there, do a training needs analysis, and then we customize the program for them. But we have, of course, off-the-shelf uh, training programs like lean manufacturing, um, yun nga, yung the basic uh, productivity tools and technologies, yung PDCA cycle, yung mga ganyan. Mm -hmm. We teach them how to do a very organized brainstorming session that would essentially lead to them identifying really the root cause of their problem and then identifying also the solutions that would tend to solve the problems. Of course, uh, we are heavy on ano, the involvement of our human resources, the NWPC being at actual the Department of Labor and Employment. Okay. Normally, yung mga big companies, alam na nila yan, di ba? Yes. Oh. They are advanced, yes. they have the technologies, yes, they yes. know how to handle this. Yes. Ang problema yung mga MSMEs, no? yung mga micro, small, and medium enterprises. So, I'm interested because I, I know many MSMEs are members of Phil Export. Um, how many of them are already using product, your productivity toolbox, for example? And how many of them are engaged in, in these programs na monitor nyo ba yun? Oo, ganito. Um, for the technical assistance that we have provided since we launched the program, uh, siguro uh, previous years back pa, no, uh, ngayon we were able to already train uh, more than 200,000 micro, small, and medium enterprises. Wow, ang dami. Yes, and over the years, and uh, there are more or less mga half a million uh, individuals in those enterprises that we have already trained. Mm -hmm. Of course, the, the success of the program would really rely on the management mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the sustainability of the program. What we do is uh, after, for example, uh, giving them a training, for example, after three months, we would return to the company and ask uh, what are the programs that you have already implemented if there are still some other uh, training that you would need. Mm -hmm. And by the way, the trainings that we give are for free. Ayun, I was for going micro, to that. Oh, small, and medium enterprises. Kasi isang because, issue pa yun, di ba? Yes, because if they would hire a consultant, it, you know, it's very expensive. Yes, for example, a uh, um, lean manufacturing mm -hmm. expert or a Six Sigma mm -hmm. expert would cost how, how much? And you give Probably the package. Probably 150 to 200,000. And you give the package yes, for yes, free? Wow. Yes, yes. We give it to them. Uh, normally, so that we would uh, no, save on the resources. Uh, group. We group them. Group. We group them. Oh, so, yeah. how do you how do you choose whom to how to whom to give this free trainings or do they apply ba? It's it's both. Uh, they apply but uh, because we are also proactive in the regions, we tie up with the LGUs, uh, with the uh, management associations, mm -hmm. the labor associations and ask them for those uh, of their members who are willing to undertake the program. Mm -hmm. So, meron yung enrollment ano. For example, uh, magbibigay lang muna kami ng orientation on the kind of program that we give and then afterwards we will we'll give them forms on among the programs that they saw uh, saan sila interested doon. So if they would sign up, then we will organize the another batch. Ultimately, ang goal namin is number one, makapag-implement talaga sila ng productivity improvement programs. And then kung magkakaroon ng fruits yung, ano, yung implementation ng program, for example, costs, cost savings, yung mga ganyan, or ma, ma ano nila exceed nila yung targets nila hopefully uh, magkaroon sila ng productivity incentive schemes para din yung mga workers assured na uh, they also share in the in the fruits of ano uh -huh. the productivity so we also give technical assistance on that on how they can craft 
their productivity incentive schemes. Okay, so, so this, mm -mm. ito na, employers na yung involved dito? Yes, yes, employers and the workers. Okay. Okay. Alright, may qualification ba for um, MSME to, to be part of that program? O, basta o yung ano, interesado lang, basta interesado basta lang sila okay na? Basta interesado, oo. Okay. At this, ang talagang we want to secure is really the commitment of the employer. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Kasi, um, Sayang based, naman, based on ano? our experience kasi, kung hindi interesado yung employer, hindi talaga mag-fly yung program. Talagang kailangan. And in the end naman, pag nakikita nilang maganda yung result because it improves their, you know, production, it improves the way they do the business, their bottom lines, they would continue to, ano, to engage us. And yung, for example, sa Kapatid Awards ng ECO, mm -hmm. meron kasi kaming ano, um, Productivity Olympics. So, oh, yung yeah, mga yeah. micro, small, and medium enterprises mm -hmm. na bigyan namin ng technical assistance at kung maganda yung programs nila, they document it and I then know. they compete. Okay. So, usually yung mga nananalo doon, they became so, or they become very, uh, ano tawag dyan, enthusiastic about also competing in mm. another, ano. So, normally, sa Kapatid Awards, may nakikita kami, oh, ito, nag-champion to sa Productivity Olympics. Pwede na siya. Pwede na siya dun sa mas mataas na, ano, na, mataas na awards. So, Alright. And ano naman, of your mind, ano yung examples, for example, ng mga productivity programs and then yung impacts on, let's say, a particular company? Mm -mm. Iba-iba. Uh, so, yung isang sinabi ko kanina is, uh, for example, uh, they would go into productivity program that tends to uh, reduce the cost of uh, doing business. Mm -hmm. diba? in, sa, in, yung sa loob, sa, sa loob yung sa mga resources uh -oh. nila, diba? makatipid sila. So, mag-create sila ng team, gagawa sila ng program. Uh, it's either a uh, cost reduction program or improvement of the systems that they use. Halimbawa, kung sa manufacturing, kung how many steps yung ginagawa nila mm. before ma-produce oh, yung product, right. if they can lessen that into several steps mm -hmm. lang, ang laki nung, ano, mm -hmm. nung savings na mag magagawa sa kanila. Meron din kaming advocacy about uh, my green enterprise. So, yung mga programs that are into greening the oh, environment. Yan na yung uso. Every, oh, everything, everybody is oh, oh, oh. going green. So, yung recycling, halimbawa, uh, if doon sa mga tourism industries, yung meron silang catch basin ng mga rainwaters na pwede nilang gamitin para doon mm, sa pang... Yan, gusto ko yan. Ganun. Gusto ko yung mga rainwater collector oh, na yan. Oo, oh, 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 yung mga ganun. Yan. So, marami, marami na tayong mga nabigyan. And, and really, it's more, ang, sabi ko nga, more ano yon eh, yung aming technical assistance on soft skills, yung ano talaga, it's management systems, yung mga tinatawag natin, yung mga OD intervention. Okay. Meron ba kayong quota niyan, ED, Chris? Kasi um, ang dami pang MSMEs, di ba? I mean, in terms of the annual budget or the capacity of the commission to handle these programs for MSMEs. So, meron ba yung prioritization? Ba't pwede ba silang mag-apply na lang? Sa regions yun, no? Oo, sa regions. Actually, they can just, ano eh. Uh, go into our Facebook account kasi yun yung madalas na pinupuntahan oh. din ng aming mga, bukod pa of course aming website uh, they can just, you know, meron kaming i-apply na tinatawag mm. so mag-apply lang sila doon or they can call or they can go kung gusto nilang physical na pumunta doon punta sila sa aming mga regional offices. Yung concern mo kanina, meron ba kaming kota because of our, of course of our own resource constraint din um For example, for this year, ang aming um, resource allocation is for 15,000 MSMEs mm, for this year. Pero madami year. din yun, no? Oh. But spread nationally oh, course, na yun. Oh. Oh. Nationwide, ganun. So hopefully, ma-achieve ma din namin yung target namin doon. Ang isa kasi naming challenge din dyan, alam mo, ang dami kasing priorities din ng mga companies din, oh, sa operations oh, nila. So, When you do an advocacy for them, lalo na dun sa mga mas malili. At sasabihin nila, we don't have time, time. for that. Kasi At saka ganito, tao. Oo, the tao that will, ano. So, sometimes it's, it's difficult to really penetrate uh, at first. Pero, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. pag naman persistent pag yung aming mga staff na, oh, makakatulong pala talaga, sige. O, oh, ayan. So, mm -hmm. doon, nakakaano rin kami sa mm -hmm. kanila. But, mm -hmm. it takes a lot of effort then to, mm -hmm. to, market, mm -hmm. lalo na sa mga 
sa mga micro enterprises na. Oh nga. And and sila yung mas nakakailangan, nangangailangan yes. nito, 'di ba? And nakakahinayang that they don't avail kasi libre. Oo. Libre na nga eh, 'di ba? And and this will help their of course their productivity. So how how do you want them to be more involved, no? You are to- you talked about policy advocacy. Paano ba sila mag-advocate with you mm-hmm. on matters of wages and productivity? Yeah, okay. When it comes to policy advocacy, ano yan eh, uh, importante yung strategies that are being applied, for example, by our stakeholders on how they can influence changes in policy. So kami rin on our own, we do that. How do we influence decision-making uh, in government? So what we do is, uh, number one, una muna, what, uh, we collect muna data. data, data gathering muna kami. Kasi we want um, what we call a, an evidence-based ano, uh, policy advocacy. So we collect data from available sources like the Philippine Statistics Authority. Pero kung wala kaming makollect na data, we generate our own data. For example, yung tanong mo sa akin kanina na ilan ba yung mga establishments na nabigyan nyo ng training. So that's in so far as what we have already assisted. assisted. But for the other companies na hindi namin nabigyan ng assistance, so gano ba sila karami? So what we do is we tie up with, for example, the Philippine Statistics Authority to generate our own data. So when we, when when I say we tie up with PSA, nagre rider survey kami. So for example, doon sa integrated survey of uh, labor ah, establishments. Ah, dadagdagan ng questions. Yes, oh, oo. Okay. So pinatanong namin for those companies na merong 20 workers and above na they are about I suppose uh, the sampling design is more than 30,000 yon. Ano. Ilan ba sa kanila yung nag implement ng productivity improvement program? So nalaman namin na uh, nasa 40% lang ng mga companies yung meron. So, ibig sabihin, ang laki pa ng area oh. for advocacy on productivity improvement. Ibig sabihin nun, uh, hindi pa rin part ng culture ng maraming enterprises sa atin yung productivity mindset. So, that's the, the challenge that we have. At makakatulong din yung ating mga, mga employer organization na Tulungan kami mm-hmm. rin doon sa advocacy right. na yun. Na dapat yung mga maliliit na kumpanya natin ay matulungan natin silang maintindihan na it's important that our company would have this what we call a productivity culture. So that's one area. The second is uh, in minimum wage setting, we do consultation uh, even before the boards would issue their orders or decisions. They do a lot of consultation. So Pag halimbawang nag-call na sila ng public hearing, yung mga enterprises na sa tingin nila, they have a stake on the issue being discussed there. Mm-hmm. Oh, dapat pupunta mm-hmm. sila doon kasi kasama ang mga employers mm-hmm. doon. Eh. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So, okay. para marinig yung kanilang mga bosses. Ganun. So, importante yun sa, ano, sa decision making. So, we do networking, we do data gathering, consultation. Even before we craft our for us, our own positions or decisions on policies that, that would affect our labor market and specifically the, you know, the human resources. Pero EDC, you mentioned um, culture. Yeah. Culture ba ang problem? Not resources, not interest, or what, whatever? Uh, when, when I say culture, it's really the organizational culture that prevail in in the company or in the organization, no matter how small. Mm-hmm. Right? So, kung ang culture ay very adversarial yung relationship ng labor and management, you cannot expect them to be productive. Kahit ano pang gawin nilang dalawa. Kung walang harmonious relationship, hindi mag-fly yung objective nila, for example, na I mean, mag-increase yung bottom line nila, etc. So, dapat maturo sa kanila yung mga ganun. And, Yung sinasabi ko kanina na productivity, it's not just about, you know, uh, applying technologies. Hindi lang yan yung basic concept na output over input, na kailangan maging productive ka. At the end of the day, it's really, your st- productivity is the state of the mind. Mm-hmm. Of, mindset. Diba? Mindset talaga siya, eh, on how you think you can contribute to the organization. Mm-hmm. Oh, I decided to be part of this organization. So, if the, or- if the owner of the organization values you, 
knows how you contribute and you understand the you know mm -hmm. the direction that the company is ano di ba maganda yung ganun yung relationship, relationship. Yes. Oh. yung relationship so and then you, you i picked up lang because you mentioned labor there's a labor group mm -hmm. sa mga small hindi normally wala silang formal labor yes, group yes, no yes, okay. so so do you also deal with this labor groups yeah, formal yeah, or oh. informal yes yes we hindi do. sa employers lang no? oh, oh yes we do we also so yung provide, advocacy oh. different from the employers than the labor groups ah uh, siguro yung slanting lang nung ano yung pagbibigay lang nung ano nung program kasi more direct yung sa ano yung sa company on how they can actually facilitate the implementation of the program. Pagdating uh -oh. naman sa Kasi workers, sila talaga yes, it's really changing the mindset. Na if you open, if if you're open to changes, if you're open to the, uh, you know the direction that the company will pursue, if you're open to contributing to the organization, then malayo yung malalating ng organization. Right. So ganon yung mga ano. So pag mga workers more on the Ano yun eh, work teams, paano nila may improve yung ano nila. So, talagang tools and technologies yung ibibigay sa kanila. Sa management naman, it's really how they can improve their management systems. Okay, very interesting. Alright, so finally, we've been talking about micro, small, and medium enterprises being engaged. And we are glad that you're reaching out, no? Hindi lang nag-a-apply sila. You are reaching out to them. So, would you like to invite them again to avail of the services and programs of the commission yeah oh, of course uh sa lahat ng ating mga owners ng mga micro small and medium enterprises we are inviting you to take advantage of the training and technical assistance services that we provide uh, in the area of productivity improvement and gain sharing schemes so makakatulong ito sa inyong mga kompanya at ito ho ay we give it uh, for free to uh, all micro small and medium enterprises and the information available sa FB yeah, sa portal yeah, of course. so they can uh, go to our F FB account uh, i-type lang nila yung National Wages and Productivity Commission lalabas na yung aming FB account no i-follow nyo kami kasi makaka-receive kayo ng mga updates tungkol doon at sa aming website www.nwpc.dole.gov.ph at sa aming telephone number naman 527-5520 Thank you! Thank you! Complete with the telephone number Wala na cellphone number Okay, that's a lot of good news for our MSMEs Thank you, E.D. Chris sa lahat ng ginagawa nyo for our MSMEs and thank you for joining us here Okay you're welcome, Lisa. Okay. Back to you on the studios. Alam mo, Gianna, natutuwa ako sa hard work na ipinapakita ng Department of Labor and Employment, particularly itong uh, National Wages and Productivity Commission. I agree, sir. Kaya naman, thank you Ms. Liza and of course Director C for your insights. We hope na nainggan nyo ang ating mga audiences na makibahagi sa advocacy initiatives ng ECOP, lalo na sa topic ng wages and benefits. The next segment of our program will feature another question from a netizen. Sinend niya ang kanyang concern sa ECOP Facebook page. But before we proceed to the next segment of ECOP Plus 2.0 Amplifying Public Service, let us have a short break. The Employers' Confederation of the Philippines offers training programs on industrial relations, occupational safety and health, Management and Employee Development, Human Resources, and Entrepreneurship Development. The Industrial Relations Programs cover labor laws, dialogue mechanisms, administrative investigations, and grievance handling. The Occupational Safety and Health Programs ensure safe and healthy workplaces in accordance with laws and good practices. The Management Development Programs help companies manage tasks and people in the context of the fast-changing business environment. The Employee Development Programs foster agility among workers through soft skills for survival and sustainability. 
The HR programs enable practitioners to build smarter organization and enhance employee-employer relationships. The entrepreneurship development programs help aspiring and existing small business entrepreneurs start or expand their businesses. ECOP trainers and consultants come from different sectors, academe, business, and government who are experts and seasoned practitioners in their respective fields. Because of the disruption caused by the COVID-19 pandemic, the ECOP Training and Development Department shifted its public programs online using the Zoom lectures and complemented with online exercises and case studies. To our in-house programs, ECOP works closely with our client companies in the design and execution of the training intervention to suit its specific requirements. The ECOP eCampus is a learning management system where participants can learn anywhere and anytime at their own pace. It enables ECOP to offer courses and programs either in fully online or blended approach formats. It is a repository of learning materials, pre-recorded videos, exercises, quizzes, and evaluation tools. Through the eCampus, participants can also interact with the resource persons and other participants and retrieve their certificates. Both ECOP members and non-members may access our training services. ECOP members are entitled to free slots in some of our training programs and enjoy substantial discounts on the registration fees in all courses. To learn more about our training programs, visit www.ecop.org.ph or email us at ecoptnd at gmail.com. back. We are now in the Echo Plus Amplifying Public Service segment of the show. In this segment, layunin namin na i-feature at tulungan bigyang solusyon ang isang problema na kinakaharap ng isa sa ating mga ka-Echo. Ang sulat natin today ay galing kay Dennis. Siya ay may-ari ng isang maliit na tindahan ng pintura sa Las Piñas. Narito ho ang kanyang sulat. Dear Echo, ako si Dennis. Small business owner na nagre-retail ng paint and other construction materials. nag employ ang aming maliit na hardware ng mga tena empleyado. Mayroong gumagawa ng administrative work at mayroong ding mga skilled workers. Limited ang aming resources sa kompanya. Ngunit, gusto ko pa rin sanang maka-experience ng mga free training programs ang aking mga employees para naman sila ay mag-improve sa kanilang mga trabaho at para matuto ng mga new skills and knowledge. Bukod pa dyan, ano ba ang pwede kong gawin bilang employer para ako ay maging up-to-date sa mga latest trends and developments pagdating sa mga responsibilidad at pagdating na rin sa mga issues na maaaring makaapekto sa negosyo? Siyempre, nais ko rin naman magpalago ng negosyo in the future. Hindi pwedeng maging kontento sa kung ano lang ang alam at kilala ko ngayon. Sana ay matulungan ninyo akong mabigyan ng impormasyon. Ito po ang sulat ni Dennis. Maraming salamat sa iyong tanong, Dennis, at sa pagsulat mo sa amin. Alam mo Rob, very timely itong katanungan ni Dennis no? dahil maraming MSMEs kasa kasama niya na nangangailangan ng support and guidance. Yes, itong support and guidance ito ay pagdating sa pagninegosyo, pag-ensure ng well-informed ang employers, at pagsigurado na ang mga empleyado ay may learning opportunities. Kaya kasama ulit natin today si Director C na maaaring makatulong sa concern ni Dennis at ng mga small business owners na gaya niya. 
Thank you, Rob and Diana, for the question. Uh, matutulungan namin si Dennis, uh, lalo na dun sa concern niya about probably yung training and development for his workers. Uh, marami tayong mga training programs na pwedeng ibigay. Ang isang example ay yung, uh, yung Steve uh, training namin for uh, workers. Ang ibig sabihin ng Steve ay industrious, systematic, time conscious, and a strong value for work. So yung mga values na yun, ituturo natin yun sa inyong uh, mga manggagawa at paano nakakatulong yung mga values na yun para mapalago yung ating negosyo. At doon naman sa iyo, pwede ka naming tulungan doon sa mga management practices na pwedeng i-implement ng iyong uh, uh, hardware. Pwede ka naming tulungan, for example, paano ma-improve yung general aesthetics ng iyong hardware. Uh, yung tinatawag namin na module on retail merchandising, makakatulong yon para, for example, ma mabenta yung mga non-moving items mo kung saan mo siya strategically pwedeng ilagay para mapansin ng mga customers at mabenta siya. So, ilan lang yon sa pwede naming itulong sa iyo. So, probably what we can do is uh, we can schedule a visit to your company, yung aming regional board. Kung nasa NCR ka, papupuntahin namin yung aming staff from NCR at magkaroon ng initial na training needs analysis sa iyong kumpanya kung paano ka namin maaaring tulungan. Salamat, Dennis! Thank you very much, Director C, for sharing with us your expertise. Alam mo, Gianna, si Director C, very experienced talaga siya pagdating sa mga ganitong problema. I agree, Sir Rob. Now, for our second concern ni Dennis, uh, yan ang magiging role ng ECOP, lalo na kung mapagdesisyonan niyang sumali sa membership ng ECOP. Ilan lamang sa benefits ng mga members ng ECOP ay ang aming regular na pag-conduct ng knowledge sharing meetings tungkol sa mga latest policy, issuances related sa industrial relations, social policies, at iba pang topics na relevant sa mga employers. Meron din kaming mga seminars at workshops about IR or HR concepts, policies, and best practices na maaaring nyong masalihan. Meron din kaming opportunity bilang member ng ECOP na i-build ang inyong network as we also conduct consultations on issues affecting business and society where you as an employer can share your insights and experiences sa ibang company. Yes, trust talaga ng ECOP ang pag-provide ng ganitong mga services at assistance sa mga companies and to make sure that they stay relevant and updated to keep up with the current times. We hope you can join ECOP, Dennis, at sa mga viewers naming interesado ring maging member ng ECOP, kindly email us at membership.ecop at gmail.com or visit the website shown on our screens right now. And with that, isa na naman pong ka-ECOP ang ating natulungan with the help of our friends from the government. Maraming salamat po. Interested in getting familiar with a single and official voice of Philippine employers? Want to stay updated on the latest news and trends on labor and social policy issues? By becoming a member of ECOP, you can have access to all of these and many more. Explore the benefits of joining ECOP. ECOP provides its members with a comprehensive range of services that includes training, advocacy, and information through seminars, research publications and networking. The ECOP Help Desk provides assistance to members who may have questions or concerns on issues regarding human resource management, HRM, industrial relations, IR, and occupational safety and health, OSH. Managed and operated internally using ECOP facilities and technical staff, the Help Desk can be easily accessed through multiple platforms. We regularly conduct free webinars to keep our constituents in the business community abreast with the latest and upcoming developments on industrial relations, social policies, and related topics. Aside from free webinars, 
We offer to members big discounts in our public training programs, seminars, and workshops on IR, HR, OSH, and a lot more. Philippine employers are represented by ECOP in various tripartite bodies. ECOP's participation in congressional hearings and other policy consultations ensures that the voice of employers is articulated, heard and acted upon. As a member, you can network and join events that bring together company representatives to discuss developments and issues on industrial relations and human resources management through our members general meeting MGM. Aside from this, you can attend Discover ECOP, an interactive forum organized for members and non-members alike to familiarize them with ECOP's advocacies, activities, and programs. An overview of pending labor bills in Congress and proposed policy issuance is discussed in the Technical Executive Committee of the Department of Labor and Employment are usually presented. We provide a learning and sharing platform among representatives of our member companies through our ECOP networks. ECOP Networks has three fields of specialization which are, Industrial Relations and Human Resources, IRHR, Occupational Safety and Health, OSH, and Corporate Social Responsibility and Responsible Business Conduct, CSR, RBC. As a member company, your management or HR representatives will have the opportunity to receive full overseas technical scholarship on topics such as industrial relations, human resource management, and occupational safety and health organized in Japan. ECOP also organizes the annual National Conference of Employers, where our members enjoy discounts when participating. Lastly, you will enjoy other benefits such as up-to-date, informative e-bulletin and research publications. We provide our members up-to-date and relevant news, studies and statistics gathered from reputable agencies as well as trends and practices directly collected from various industries. Our members can enjoy 50% discount on research publications such as Corporate Compensation Survey and CBA Report free conferences, workshops, or seminars by invitation through ECOP Special Projects. Exclusive access to members-only page in the ECOP website where you can review different project tools, documents, copies of position papers, minutes of committee meeting, and loads of other records. ECOP Plus, amplifying your voice is ECOP's digital television program that airs regularly in various social media platforms. The program discusses ECOP's advocacies and programs. It also features interviews with employers, practitioners and policy makers on current, evolving and future workplace issues. Airs twice a month, 5.30 p.m., on our Facebook page and YouTube channel. As our members continue to grow their businesses, ECOP will always continue its mandate of protecting the interest and advocating the welfare of the business community. Discover the many ways you can support your business or enterprise today. Join the Employers Confederation of the Philippines. Your partner. Your advocate. The single and official voice of Philippine employers on labor and social policy issues. Again, maraming salamat po. Yan po ang public service segment natin. Thank you, Dennis, for sending us your letter. Sana ay nas nasagot namin ang iyong mga concerns. We're inviting you, mga kaekop, na ipadala sa amin ang inyong mga concerns para kami ay makapagbigay ng tulong sa inyo at ito ay aming ma-feature sa mga susunod na episode. Upang ipadala ang inyong kwento, mag-send lamang ng email sa helpdesk at ecop.org.ph o mag-send ng message sa aming Facebook page na makikita sa inyong mga screen. And with that, tapos na po ang ating programa ngayong araw. Thank you so much, Liza and Director C, para sa inyong oras ngayong gabi. Maraming salamat kay Dennis sa iyong katanungan. Sana ay nasagot namin ito ng sapat at sana makatulong rin ang kwento mo sa iba pang MSMEs. Once again, ECOP is here to ensure that your voices as employers are heard, articulated, and acted upon. ECHO promotes social dialogue, enhances engagement with employers and stakeholders, 
expounds on its policy positions, and tackles industrial relations issues. We are here to pave the way for you to become responsible, sustainable, and inclusive. Mga ka once again, we are your hosts, Gianna Rosal and Rob Baronilia. See you every other Mondays at 5.30 p.m. sa next episode ng Echo, Echo Plus Amplifying Your Voice 2.0. Keep safe and God bless everyone. Shots, digital Media TV. Here's our services offered. Same day edits. Photography. Digital Lats. Giving you our best shots. Book now.